Now, the first thing I want to cover is the voice recorder. This is the voice recorder that I use. Um, if you were to go to my earlier videos uh, and then listen to the videos I make now, you'll see the difference in audio quality. And um, I mean, I'm using the same phone as I always did. It's just for some reason this um, this voice recorder does a great job recording. Now, um, a couple things you have to know. When it records your um, your voice, uh, you know, whatever you're recording, it it saves it to the phone, but it pretty make pretty much makes it impossible for the next app that I'm gonna show you to find. Um, I don't know why that is. So for that reason, you will need to use a um, some kind of a cloud storage service, uh, such as. OneDrive, uh, Dropbox, those are some examples of ser of cloud services you can use. Those are both free. Um, I personally use, I have a, an account with both, but I personally use OneDrive simply because um, every once in a while I like to include like some gameplay from my Xbox One and the Xbox One automatically up when you um, save game clips. You can um, upload them directly to OneDrive because Microsoft owns OneDrive, apparently. So, um, <clears throat> but really, any cloud service will do. Like I said, those are the two that I'm familiar with. I've used Dropbox in, Dropbox in the past, but I don't use it to make my videos. But um, this is the app that I use. So, the other thing that you have to know is that it it um takes up a lot of memory in comparison to other audio files so you want to be mindful of that but this is what i use to record all my videos currently because the quality is very very good all right now i'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this screen right here it's pretty self-explanatory when you go into the uh voice recording app it has um you know on the left you have the red circle that is to start recording um and then to once you press it and you're recording it turns to a red square you'll just press that once you're done recording um over to the right when you start when you're in the middle of recording you actually have the option to pause um so like let's say you're in the middle of a recording you want to pause it but you want to resume recording after you're done pausing you can do that now here's a little disclaimer if you're doing this on your phone your active phone if a call comes in your um it'll show like it's still recording but it's not and even if you don't pick up the call, if you don't pick up the call, it'll still show like it's recording. But then when you're done, your recording is going to be a lot is only going to be up to the point where that call came in. So my suggestion is if you're going to make a video real quick and you're not um, and or, uh, you know, you just have time restraints or whatever, like I do, you may want to consider putting your phone on um, airplane mode. Just so no calls can come in and, you know, you're recording for, you know, no recording should take too, too long. I mean, if you're doing like two hour videos and stuff like that, you're probably better off using Google Hangouts. But, um, <clears throat> and I think that file would be, be humongous on this app. Like I said, it does take up a lot of memory. Um, so, but yeah, you... You basically have to make sure that no calls come in because it will it will cut your recording short and you'll either a have to do another recording to complete what you know the video that you're or the recording that you're trying to do or b delete it and then start all over again so just a fyi now this is the screen that um shows your uh your different recordings 
it gives you the option to rename and share, and I recommend that you do both. Rename because it always gives it this weird number. Um, so you want to rename it to something that's going to make it easier for you to find when you go to access your OneDrive or your Dropbox. Um, and then, of course, share because you have to share it over to your Dropbox. So um, I always recommend that after you're done making your video that you delete the recording because it does take a lot of memory. All right, now this is the app that's going to take up majority of the tutorial, and that is simply because this is the app that I actually use to make my video, the actual video. Um, the voice recorder that I talked about, that's completely optional. If you, if your phone or or you have another means of recording that you like better, you can use that instead of the app. Is just I feel for those who complete who want to do everything completely on their phone as I do, that app works really really well. But then again, it depends on your phone. Your phone might come with an app that has recording. My actually does. It's just not that great. But yours might have one that is good. So. But as for the, actually making the videos, slideshow is what I use to do everything. Everything, aside from recording the, um, the audio. And um, what I like about it is, you know, some <clears throat> don't be afraid to, like, branch out and use other apps to do certain things. There's certain effects that I want to use sometimes, and they're not included on this app. So what I'll do is I'll go to that app, do what I got to do, then save it to my phone, and then I'll go to this app, and it'll allow me to, you know, include it in the video that <clears throat> that I'm making. But this is the app that I use, and I'm going to go ahead and get started and show you how to use it. So when you go into the app, the first thing that's going to have is you're going to get this screen that, like, it's there for like maybe three seconds, it just says video slideshow or something like that. And then you'll end up with this screen. This screen is basically the menu. You're always going to have uh, maybe some advertisement here or um, now whoever owns the app started doing these contests where apparently you can actually win money. I think the biggest prize that I've seen is like a $100. I think you got to do some stuff to um, get enrolled in those contests. I really, that doesn't interest me, but if it interests you, just want you to know that it's there. Also, if you use the app <clears throat> um, fairly regularly, they started doing this thing where you'll, be, you'll have access to all the pro features uh, for like 30 days or something like that. Basically, this is a free app. But there is a pro version that you have to pay for if you wanted to use it. And what that does is that unlocks the, uh, you can do 4K video um, and some other things that are not available when using the free version. But to be honest, everything that I've done has been with the free version. So there's n everything that you've seen in my videos, you, you don't have to pay for. But basically... The uh, the first option, which is edit video, is the option that you want to go with. So this is the screen that you're going to get after you select edit video. It's basically everything in your phone's gallery. So this is where you'll, um, you could either select a video clip or, um, you know, those videos where you'll have like the one picture and the person talking you know, if that's the type of video you want to create, you would select the one picture um, and then press start at the bottom. Start will um, will come up as soon as uh, um, actually, no, it'll be there as soon as this screen comes up. But if you haven't selected anything, it'll tell you that you have to select something. If you try to press start, once you've selected at least one item, you'll be able to start. Um, what I like about this app is at the top. You'll notice where it says all. Well, if you press that, that's a drop down. You can narrow it down to videos or pictures. So that does make it a little bit easier, especially if you have a lot of um, content on your phone. 
Um, <clears throat> you're looking to get something specific that allows you to do that. So, um, also you can select more than one picture. Um, like if you wanted to do like a slideshow on your, um, on your video, um, you can do that. <clears throat> it is a bit more work. I will get into that a little bit later, but you'll see why. But, um, if you, if you're I, I recommend for like a first video just starting out with one picture um because it makes it a lot simpler and then once you've gotten kind of gotten the hang of it um you can try to do something a little bit more complex now once uh once you press start this is this is the screen you're gonna get basically it's gonna automatically start playing the slideshow you have or the one picture if or uh, or the video clip that you selected now for the purpose of this tutorial i'm going to start out with if you were to do a you know just pick a picture so automatically it's going to play two seconds it's going to default that um picture as to two seconds <clears throat> basically over to the bottom right i recommend that you immediately go to pro the pro edit this is not the pro features so don't get that confused with what i mentioned before with the features you have to pay for this the pro edit is, is basically more specific things and even as a beginner this um i recommend going into this because it just makes every i feel it makes everything a lot easier because there's um a lot of times there's more than one way to accomplish the same thing in this app i find that the easiest route is the as um through pro edit which is, like I said, on the bottom right. So once you've selected Pro Edit, and um, like I said, if you're doing uh, the slideshow or the one picture, over to the bottom left, you're going to see Clip Edit. And um, so you're going to want to go ahead and select that. And basically what that does is it allows you to, <clears throat> with your um, slides, it allows you to pick the amount of time for each slide, uh, which is why it's a lot easier to do one, you know, so like, because, and that's the other thing is you basically have to do every slide in seconds. Um, so if your video is minutes long, you're going to have to do a little bit of math. It's not hard. Um, I'm used to it because I've been doing it for a while and I deal with seconds at my job a lot where, you know, I, w I always used to think, why can't we do everything in minutes? It just makes it easier. But because of my job way before doing YouTube and then doing these videos for a good little while, I've come accustomed to doing this. So basically, so like, let's say <clears throat> you have one slide that's 10 minutes or one, uh, you have a video recording, uh, uh, audio recording that's 10 minutes, and um, you do the one slide. Well, 10 minutes is easy because that's actually 600 seconds. So you would just select the slide, you know, when you go to do the duration, um, then it's going to, you know, it's going to bring up this little slider that automatically defaults to two seconds. You take the slider you move it all the way to the right and then it'll prompt you to put how many seconds you want that slide to be so let's say you have a 10 minute video you're doing you're going to pick 600 seconds and then you it'll automatically have your clip to be sent for 10 minutes so that's an easy um scenario keep in mind if you're doing recordings very rarely are you going to hit exactly 10 minutes or exactly five minutes or exactly however many minutes so like let's say your clip is 10 minutes in 53 seconds well that's easy because it's 653 seconds but let's say you didn't know that you would put <clears throat> really you do the amount of minutes times 60 plus the amount of seconds on top of those minutes. So however long your recording is, if it's 11 minutes, 12 minutes, and however many seconds, you're gonna take the amount of minutes, multiply that by 60, plus the amount of seconds is easy. As far as doing the multiple um, 
pictures as a slideshow that's where it becomes a little bit complicated I don't suggest doing that when you first start out because it makes it very hard um, or I shouldn't say very hard but what you could do is you just take the um, basically you kind of use the same equation I just used like let's say you got a 10 minute video or 10 minute audio that you're making a video with and you just want just a general slideshow you don't want any pictures coming in at a particular time if that's what you're trying to do is actually not too complicated basically for a 10 minute video just for an example is 600 seconds let's say you have 10 slides you multiply 600 by 10 and then it'll um whatever that number is you're gonna put each slide for that amount Sometimes you have to round up or down because things aren't going to be exact math. You know, like you might have the calculation come out to um, 5.3 seconds. Or it might say 5.389, you know what I'm saying? It'll have a bunch of numbers. I would suggest just taking those first two numbers and doing a round up or round down or, or stay the same, I should say. Um, kind of like old school math. So like if it says... 5.2 will then uh, or I'm sorry 5.23 will then I would suggest is doing each one at 5.2 seconds um, <clears throat> let's say it's 5.28 then you want to do 5.3 um, because it doesn't let you go that far it advance it's only gonna give you one digit for that point after you know so however many seconds point whatever it's only going to give you one digit after that from one to nine so that's why i recommend doing that but it's not <clears throat> it's not too difficult you just have to pay attention and um, know what you're doing because time is very exact all right so what i want to talk about now just real quick now that i've showed you how to you know add slides and and all that stuff um basically what i want to do is kind of give you all a tip here so um this isn't something that's specific to this app but this um this app does a lot to do this uh, i'm sure there's other apps that you could do the same thing and basically that is using GIFs and when I say GIFs I'm talking about GIF um, you know GIF files and um, these are files that you can download off of um, a plethora of, ro of websites and um, I've actually been implementing GIFs a lot lately in my videos and um, it it really does um look good a lot of times if you do it right so um just let me explain to you how i do it and what the gifts allow you to do and some examples of some gifts that i've um that i've used so so for um for instance like if you take a look at like um my more recent videos where you see the red hood and There'll be like a background and um, it's the same picture of Red Hood with a different background and the background moving. Both of those are actually GIFs. Now, um, I actually recommend just Googling GIFs, like switch the Google search to images and then put the name of whatever kind of GIF you're looking for and then put GIF after it. And um, not everything that comes up is going to be a GIF. There'll be some still pictures in there, and it's annoying. But you just kind of have to go through them and and um, see what you like and see what you can use um, when you're searching for GIFs. But there's two kinds of GIFs that I want to bring up. One is, um, of course, the GIF that moves, because not all GIFs move either. Um, but one. The first one I was talking about is the gifts that move. So um, there's a video that I did. I can't remember which one it was um, that had this background, but it looked like space. You know, it looked like there was stars, and they were um, and they were moving pretty fast. And then in front of it, I had the red hood. So 
basically, if you find a GIF that you would like to use as a background for one of your videos, um, all you have to do is, of course, download it. And then um, I recommend keeping a picture of just nothing. You know, if your phone has the ability to take screenshots, as most phones do, get yourself a black screen and take a screenshot of it. And then whenever you're going to implement GIFs, I recommend using that when you go to create your, you know, your video or whatever. You would um, go and select that blank, just black screen as um what you're going to use and then of course you pick the duration so however long your audio file is you want to you know multiply it by 60 you know the whole thing that i talked about before um <clears throat> then what you uh then what you do is um you'll just add the gift uh by simply going and uh you would go to um the pro um, pro editing and then you would just select um, sticker and when you do sticker you can either add a picture or a gif right now I'm talking about gifs because y'all want to know how I do this and this is how I get this effect you know um, if you find like a cool a cool gif that it loops perfectly then you know you could use that and um, it'll just it, it'll it'll look good the whole time you know just as long as it's whoever created that gif looped it correctly it'll it'll look pretty much uh seamless the way that it works out um so and then um you can actually choose the size of the gif like you can make um make it take up the whole screen you can make it take up part of the screen it's a very very nice feature um but then you um you know the uh I mean, you you kind of get the gist i mean there, there's not really much more i could say about that the other kind of gif i want to talk about does not move and those are the ones that you see me use like um I've done two videos where there's like a boxing ring. One was the Nicholas Walters one. That one I do remember the name of the one I did where I had like the duck holding a hundred dollar bill um, standing in the ring. And then I had um, the Red Hood standing in the ring with the duck. Um, and all that was done with the bo both of those were gifts. And basically these gifts, you could tell what they are. If you Google and you go look at a file, but it doesn't move, but let's say it's the image of what you're looking for. And in the background, it looks like kind of like a checkered flag a little bit. Instead of it being black, it's usually like gray. Um, when that background looks like that, that basically means that the background is completely um, void. Meaning you take that GIF and you stick it on on a background um, you don't have to crop it perfectly so that it'll look like it's naturally there it'll automatically do that and um you know I, I recommend you know playing around with that because you can get some pretty cool effects from time to time so um and since I'm on the topic um the stickers you can um you know add them anywhere um one thing that you should take advantage of is um, there's like a little thing. It, it'll it's usually like a almost pink, but really it's kind of like a red um, button, and it'll say precise timing. And um, I mean, that may not be something that you want to fool around with a whole lot in the beginning if you're just learning how to use this stuff. But once you get the hang of it. I, I recommend using the precise timing because you can have things happen exactly when you want them to happen. Now, one thing I will say is if you're editing video clips, like shortening them, because um, precise timing is used in that as well. Like Let's say you download a video and you want to use a part of it. You can actually take out just the part that you want to use. You don't have to use the whole video. 
that's where precise timing comes in. What I don't like is that the precise timing on this app is not really all that precise when it comes to video um, editing. When it comes to music, when it comes to when you want this to show up and when you want it to disappear and all that stuff, it's great. But when you're wanting to take out a specific part of a video, sometimes the precise timing isn't so precise. I've had times where I've um, tried to edit in a... Um, like I'm trying to shave a little bit off the beginning of a video. Like I have it almost exactly how I want it, but I want to shave a little bit more. So I add like a second or a millisecond or whatever it is that I think is necessary to get what I want. And when it's and when it's done editing it, it's not what I wanted. It it it's actually exactly the same as before I shaved off that millisecond is exactly or even a second or two sometimes even a second or two it won't um it won't make any difference it'll start exactly where it did as if when when you didn't so I'm thinking that's just a bug with the app um this app does get updated on a regular basis so I um you know, that may be something that gets fixed, but for now, um, that is something that I want you to be aware of. Precise timing is precise in music, is precise in um, everything else except for video clips that you are trying to edit down to, um, to specific points some, at times. Alright, so once you have your video, you know, set up like how you want it to be, um, whether it be a slideshow or gifts or or just one picture that's showing the whole time. Once you have that set up, then all you have to do is select your audio, which is pretty easy. All you have to do is go to music. Um, it's going to start you off with like their music files. All you have to do is swipe over to the right. And it'll put you into your music files. Now, it'll automatically line up everything you have right there. Now, it's in alphabetical order. And if you're like me and have a gazillion audio files, this is not going to be the ideal way to put the audio. Well, first off, if you use the video recorder, you're not going to find it there. Anyways, um, you actually... Remember what I said, when you're using that video recorder, you have to move it to a cloud service. So basically, you're going to select choose um, choose other app. Or, um, I forget exactly how it works. I'll have it on the screen. But um, you'll, you'll choose to use another audio app to choose your audio. And then uh, whatever cloud service that you that you use if you're using that um, voice recording you would select that in my case I always use OneDrive but remember you're free to use whatever you want and um, basically it'll take you into that app and then you just have to go to wherever you save the file to select it and um, and then use it and then all you have to do is press add it'll it'll give you the option to add that audio now two things I want to say real quick you cannot have two audio files occupying the same space at the same time meaning if you're wanting background music like you see how I do it you have to you're gonna to have to save the um, like for instance um, you you know you got your video made without the background music you know you got your talking like how I do it. I'm using myself as an example you save it then you're going to have to go back into video editing just to add the background music. And um, if you're adding background music, to be honest, it's actually pretty quick. Um, because when it's comprising the video that you just made, it might take a while to make the video. Um, it just depends on how intricate your video is. If it, if all you did was put a background in, in your audio, it's not going to take that long. But if you've added a lot of stickers or subtitles, which I'm going to go into in a little bit, um, you know, and all this stuff is go is going to take longer. But the beauty of adding background music 
is that it literally um it literally just takes a a couple seconds usually depending on how long your video is if you have a longer video it's going to take a little bit longer to do it but it doesn't take very long um to the point where normally when you create a video it's going to tell you percentage it's going to like the screen's going to go black and then in white numbers it'll say one percent two percent and and you could actually see the progress of your video um when you're adding background music it doesn't do that it actually just brings up a little bar that says rendering and once that bar is full then it's added that background music so um if you're working with limited space on your memory you definitely um after you downloaded or um have created like let's say you created your video and then you added background music then you want to go back to the one that doesn't have background music and delete it because um you do have to make sure you have enough space on your phone to um to make the finished product if you don't the good news is it won't waste your time it'll let you know you don't have enough space and it simply won't even attempt to create the video um at that point you could just go and delete what you need to delete in order to make that video happen um but if you just get in the habit of going back and deleting the stuff that you don't need like let's say you downloaded a video that you need just a part of and then you um you've edited it to how to the best of your ability to what you want it to be go to the original a larger video that you deleted or that you downloaded and delete that um because that's just going to take up more space um the other thing is when deleting or um editing a video like i said it, you're just taking out a certain part of that video that you want it does the same thing where it doesn't take up a whole lot of time it just brings up that rendering bar and then um once that bar is filled which usually takes like 10 20 seconds um then the clip that you need is then there ready um so um those are those quick things um so but back to what i was saying about two audio files cannot occupy the same space what you can do is have an audio file once it's ended or you can have it end at a certain point then you're able to add a second audio file to start immediately after that or it doesn't have to be immediate you can use the precise timing to have it start at a particular time after that however you want it to work out so precise timing does work with uh, uh, multiple audio files in order to use mul multiple audio files is in the pro edit it'll say multi audio and then from there that's pretty self-explanatory you pick the audio file the same way that you did how i explained before you can have it end at a specific point and then add another one you could also have it start at a specific point of course um and then you know you you do what you need to do um so there's just that little bit of information okay so now i want to talk about subtitles now what's cool about the subtitles is um you can pretty much do whatever you want with them you can make them as big as you want you can make them as small as you want you can place them wherever you want um precise timing is there to have it there for as long as you want it to be whether it be the full video whether it be it's just at a certain point it automatically defaults to two seconds on the um on your subtitles so you always have to you're, you're pretty much going to have to tweak the um precise timing every time um if you're putting if you're adding subtitles to things that people are actually saying that's cool but i will let you know it is tough um especially well if you're only doing like a short word um uh, for instance when i did my david hay video throwback thursday david hay um you kind of had to um or not actually that's not the one i was thinking of it was actually uh shannon briggs david hay i had to do it too but shannon briggs i think i had to do it more um and in the shannon briggs one i noticed that like when he would say who are you it was like each time he said it it only took him like a second 
So I had to use precise timing to cut it down to uh, one second instead of two. And then other times, of course, you're going to have to extend it beyond the two seconds. So it just depends on how fast the person talks and, you know, all this stuff. But um, I, oh, when adding subtitles, I recommend, like, uh, um, subtitles to what people are actually saying, I should say. I recommend listening, like, watching the video and knowing when that point is going to come up. Because what you want to do is, as soon as they're about to say what you want to add the subtitle to, you pause it. And then you add the subtitle. You'll, you'll press, there's an add button at the bottom. You'll press that add button and then it'll um, it'll ask you what you want to say. So you put in whatever it is and then um, at that point you can make it bigger, smaller. You do all that stuff. Also, you can change the fonts. Um, it's all basically found in the um, options. So that's where you would do the precise timing. Um, and then um, just make sure that when you, when you do the precise timing, you can't do anything else. What I mean by that is you can't go and then edit the um, the font and then go edit the color and all. And then, you know, you have to do the precise timing. And at the bottom, there's an OK button. You have to press that OK button or else it doesn't do it. Once you've done that, then you can go back into the options and tweak everything else. The color, the font, all that stuff. Once you've gotten the precise timing, um, because if you do the precise timing, then you go update something else and then you come back to precise timing. It goes back to the original timing that it was at. So just want you to be aware of that because it does get annoying when um, you've wasted some time, even though it's just a couple seconds. But me, I, I usually tend to um, edit while I have downtime at work. And um, downtime is not always all that long. So when I lose seconds, um, because, uh, of course, I do YouTube for free, um, but I get paid at my job. I have to prioritize my job over YouTube. So um, it does get, an but I'm still passionate about what I do here on YouTube. So it does get annoying when I'm in the middle of an edit or maybe I did an edit. Um, but I didn't do it right. Like I said, I'm using the timing, precise timing on your, on, um, your subtitles. Let's say I did the precise timing. Then I went back or, um, while I did that, I went and changed something on the font. Then I come back to precise timing It's back at the precise timing. Then I have a customer. I have to stop. You know what I'm saying? So, um, a lot of y'all may not have the time, those type of time restraints, so it may not be that big of a deal, but I just want you to be aware. Um, set your precise timing first and then go back into the options and tweak everything else because it won't save if you don't do it that way. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's precise or um, that's the subtitles. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about Cre uh, actually creating the video then so at the very top right you're going to see this arrow pointing right you press that and then um, at the top of your screen you're going to see something that says save the gallery you'll press that and then here the options change from time to time I don't really understand what makes it you know I, I'm sure it has to do with the type of files that you're dealing with but um you're always going to have at least a fast mode and HD mode. Um, and then sometimes you'll have another option, which is um, only if you have the pro version, the paid version um, that says 1080p. Um, if you use the app enough, they'll actually grant you the pro version for like 30 days or whatever. Um, and you'll have the pro options available to you, you know, um, which is cool. Not not many apps do that where they'll, you know, if you use the app enough, they'll unlock the paid stuff for a certain amount of time. So, um, but, um, 
what I want you to be aware of is, well, one, if you're using videos, if those videos are in HD, unless you buy the paid version, you're not going to be able to use them. So if you're downloading videos, you want to download them in 720p or less. Which 720 is not bad. It's not bad at all. It's just not the most crisp. The most crisp, of course, is 4K. 4K you have to pay as well. Um, so, you know, just uh, be aware of that if you have any, if you're recording on your phone and, and whatever you're recording, you're um, tending to use on this app, make sure that you're recording less than 1080p because if not, you're not, it, it's not even going to allow you to, to edit unless you're willing to pay for the app, which I don't really, I, to be honest, I don't know how much the paid version is. You know, it's more than likely like two or three dollars, like most other apps like this but um I, you know don't take my word for it it may be more maybe less but um my suggestion is to always go hd mode i used to use fast mode and here's the thing when you're downloading or when you're creating the video i mean saving the gallery um it is um well depending on your phone um, it used to make my phone basically the whole time I was creating a video, I could not use my phone. Now, if a phone call comes in while it's creating the video, you can actually answer the phone call. Um, at least on my phone, I have a note for, um, it allows me to answer the phone call, but I can also now I didn't used to be able to do this, but now I can actually press home and it'll still be creating a video in the background. Just make sure that you pull down your notification bar because if it is making the video, it'll show in your notification bar and it'll have like a status. Um, if you don't see that, then it has then it's not saving it to your gallery and you need to go do it all over again. I suggest that for your first video. You don't even make a video that you intend on make on keeping. I suggest making like just going in there, throwing in a slide, putting it in for like 10 minutes. Don't even add audio and then um, see what happens when you press your home button while it's saving it to the gallery. Because if it does save it, then you know that your phone is going to allow you to um, do it. Um... And if it doesn't, then you know that the whole time your phone's saving it to the gallery, you're not really going to be able to do anything. That means you're not going to be able to go on YouTube, you're not going to be able to go on web browsing or all that stuff. Um, now, if you have a Note or another Android that does multi-window, um, well, I can only speak for the Note 4. Um, it does allow me to use multi-window, meaning um, before I go to save the gallery, I can pull up. A little mini window of um, YouTube tell it to create the video and and I can go through that um, mini window whether it be YouTube or anything else and I can fool around on that app until it's done um, so those are just some little tips um, on how it works with the saving so um the other thing you could do sorry my alarm the other thing you can do is um because a lot of people who have phones also have tablets so if you have an android tablet you could also i don't have an android tablet i actually have a ipad um i kind of want to get an android tablet because um that's the other thing. If your phone is older and has been through some wear and tear, I've noticed that my phone lately, um, it just started doing this maybe the last couple of weeks. Um, when it, if it's a longer video, um, you know, a video that takes longer to save to the gallery, when I get to the upper 90%, it, um, my phone starts acting up and it'll still save it. Um, usually I only have one time where it didn't save my video, but it doesn't, it, it like gets rid of the, um, the percentage screen. 
Sometimes it's a pain in the butt to unlock the phone when it does that. And um, for that reason, I think I might be getting a tablet, an uh, Android tablet that will allow me. Um, so I could do the video edits on the tablet because basically what you can do is if you have the, you know, the OneDrive or the Dropbox or any other cloud storage, what you do is you just download the, um, on your tablet, you download that cloud storage plus uh, video slideshow. And then because the audio, if you're using that audio, um, because you're saving it to the Dropbox or whatever anyways, then you just basically upload everything in there. And then on um, video slideshow, you have the ability to go and retrieve all that, all those files and create your video on there. If you were to do that, um, then you won't have to worry about your phone, not, uh, you know, if your phone, because every phone is going to be different, but if your phone doesn't allow you to save to gallery and do other things at the same time, then that would be a healthy option. You just, um, send all the files to your Dropbox or OneDrive. Then you go, um, into slideshow and, you know, like, um, you know, you just do everything from there. It's an extra step, but if you're, you know, a lot of people can't have their phone not, um, they can't have their phone just dedicated to doing one thing at a specific time uh, because the videos can be, can take a while to save. It just depends. Um, the more intricate it is, I think the, the longest I've had to wait is like 20 minutes. So it just depends. But I'm usually doing it while I'm working, and um, I can't be talking on my phone while I work anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. But, um, yeah, just um, just keep that in mind. You're, you're not really going to be able to do much of anything else, uh, possibly, with your phone. So if you have a tablet, you can kind of just move everything over there and... Um, and then if you still need it on your phone to upload it to YouTube, then all you got to do is put it when, uh, take the finished video, upload it into, um, Dropbox. You could do it from your laptop as well. They got OneDrive and Dropbox on laptop, you know, on, um, you know, laptop version as well. So as long as you know your password, you can access everything. So I think I've covered pretty much everything. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section. Um, you know, you keep in mind there's other apps you can use to either A, replace this. You know, you might find one that you like better or B, use with this. Like there's other apps that I use too. Um, but this is the, these are the main apps. The other ones, I, I'm not even going to include in the video because really just to use a filter, you know. Um, but like, let's say you find something that has like a filter, you can create your video, then run it through that app's filter, and then boom, you got your finished product, um, that you want to upload on YouTube or Facebook or whatever you want to do with it. So, um... But yeah, that's um, that's all I have. Um, please share this video. That way, you know, others who want to be able to make videos in this fashion can uh, actually have the know-how. Oh, one, la one last thing. I do recommend that you play around with the app yourself. You might figure something else out that I haven't figured out or may have fi might find an improvement on how to do one of these things that I've showed you. But anyways, to all my subscribers, anybody watching my videos, or if you just so happen to stumble upon this video, hope you all have a wonderful day. Peace.